It's taken me well over a year to gather the courage to talk about this openly. I can't help but feel responsible, and you'll understand why soon. On a late night in October of 2015, the sky collapsed over my town. The clouds that had descended blanketed themselves over my small suburban neighborhood and the nearby highway. The fog was so dense that looking out of the window yielded nearly the same results as staring directly at a blank piece of paper. That night, I remember hearing the weather sirens sounding off, echoing out their unearthly chortle across the empty streets surrounding my home. I ignored them at first, choosing to instead continue my ritual of watching my nighttime sitcoms. That, however, ended soon after the first siren went off. The flickering imagery on my much too old television broke apart, exposing warnings of low visibility and severe lightning in my sitcom's place. I watched and listened as the television seemed to join the call of the sirens outside, letting loose their bleeps and emergency tones. The signal warned us to stay inside and to avoid driving for our safety and the safety of others. I let out a quick huff in distaste as my nightly routine was interrupted. I set my eyes on a radio and decided to give it a quick try. Anything would be better than sitting in silence. Unfortunately, that thought was wrong. As I wandered towards my radio and flicked it to life, the only noises that escaped were robotic and emotionless warnings from the National Weather Service. I felt my shoulders shrug in defeat. If this had been a tornado or a hailstorm, I'd have appreciated the heads up. I could prep for the storm, but there was nothing I could do about a fog. From there, I let my eyes wander over the far too bright mist sweeping across what should be the natural dark streets. I let out a sigh and broke my gaze before heading over to my kitchen, deciding that maybe some hot chocolate would relax me enough to doze off and allow my dreams to take me away from this strange but boring evening. But as I was stirring in the hot chocolate mix into the steaming milk, an idea hit me. I had an old CB radio locked up in my attic. I might not be able to watch my shows or listen to my radio, but maybe, if I was lucky enough, some trucker would be stopped on the highway and willing to have a chat with me. I knew it was a bit of a long shot. CB radios were very rapidly going out of style for truckers, but I knew a few still had them for emergencies or idle chatter. I left the kitchen with my hot chocolate in hand and crept up to my attic steps. I blew softly on the steam rising from my cup as I made the journey to my chest of goodies from yesteryear. I lurched the old chest open and began to set up my little communications area. I even pulled up an old dusty table I had stored away for parties and placed all my needed equipment on top of it. After a few minutes, I was all ready to go. I took a small sip of my drink and turned the radio on. I listened as the age cracked through the speakers. I had hoped the radio had survived the prolonged stay in storage, and luckily, besides from the faint crackles, it seemed rather functional. I keyed the mic and called out for the fog, hopefully to anyone as idle and bored as myself. Calling out to anyone stuck out in that fog, is anyone out there? I listened as the static of the radio faded in and out nearly silently. Then, a sputter of white noise came across the net before an old man's voice came in relatively clearly. Thank goodness someone's out there. I'm losing my mind out here. Can I get a radio check? His elderly voice was gruff and hoarse, the type of voice you'd expect from someone who spent a lifetime on the road. I let my lips curl up into a smile. I really didn't expect a reply. You're coming in clear. How me? I asked, making sure he could hear my end of the conversation. A little broken up, but audible. The shit weather came out of nowhere, he grumbled. 
I imagine him leaning back in his seat, arms crossed with a radio dug into one hand. I could practically envision his windows completely smothered by the fog, isolated from everything. Yeah, I didn't see anything on the television until after the fog hit. All the stations are playing that emergency frequency. I waited for a few seconds for his response. So you're holed up inside your home then? I thought you might be on the road, like me. I heard a slightly disappointed groan from his end. Did you at least get to see the clouds fall? I paused for a moment. I had been watching my shows oblivious to the weather outside until the wordings. I didn't have the privilege to see it roll into the neighborhood. That's a firm. I'm at my place right now, and no, I didn't get to see it hit. A brief chuckle and wheeze came over the radio. You missed out. Craziest thing I've ever seen. It was almost like the clouds hit a cliff mid-air and fell straight down. They came hard enough that I was actually worried they beat my truck up. His voice trailed off slightly in thought. I managed to park on the side of the road, didn't see anyone else near me. Well damn, I'm sorry I missed it then, I replied, my smile escaping from my voice. Yeah, well, maybe some kid got it on tape. Static interrupted him, squealing loudly out of the speakers. I jumped back, slightly reaching for my ears. His voice fought through it. The fuck was that? Everything alright? I radioed in. Yeah, I think so. I think I just saw a car zip by, some sort of weird black light on it. He gave a dismissive I know damn well they can't see anything in this fog. Hell. I couldn't see anything but their dumb light going off. I leaned in closer to the radio, thinking of an explanation, but came up empty-handed. Some people just have a death wish, I guess, I shrugged. Damn stupid if you ask me. I'd say they only care about themselves. But if that was true, they'd be parked on the side of the road like me. He gave another wheezy laugh, ending in a coughing fit. Getting a little curious, I started asking him some questions. Any chance you can make anything else out there? They said there's some bad lightning in the area, but I haven't seen or heard anything like that yet. Nah, not a damn thing. Haven't heard any thunder either. Besides you, it's quiet as the grave out here. This fog doesn't even look like it's moving, and I sure as hell don't hear any wind hitting my truck. I bit my lip trying to concentrate on any noises outside. Being in my attic, I should be able to hear the wind sweeping its way through the wooden boards of my house. But he was right. There was none. This is the weirdest storm I've ever seen. To be honest, I... Wait. No, the lights are back. He interrupted himself. I could hear his voice strain as his focus shifted outside of his truck. They don't look right. They aren't on the road. His voice slowly trailed off. What do you mean? Where are you? I asked, hoping everything was alright. That's not right. Shit, the only thing on that side of the road is a tree line. No way in hell a car could squeeze through there. The lights look too high off the ground too. They're a little higher than my eye level, and I'm in a goddamn semi. Hey, just keep your eyes on it. And let me know if you're alright. You'll be okay. I... I could hear him swallow hard. They're gone. They zipped away again. Actually, fuck me, they didn't just zip away. They looked like they ran away. I swear they goddamn crouched and sprinted off. Static consumed his transmission again, but nowhere near as badly as before. It's just some lights. Maybe someone's got some flares out there. Could be some hunters trying to find their way back home in this fog. I tried sounding reasonable. I figured there must be some sort of rational explanation. Yeah, that's gotta be it. The fog must be screwing with my depth perception. I can't see anything out there. So I think I'm good. I heard faint noises coming from the radio, just behind his voice. It didn't sound like something trying to make contact with us through the radio. Rather, it sounded like something that happened to be captured while the old trucker was talking. Is there someone with you? I asked. I tried to sound unconcerned, 
as if it was a normal question to ask. Negative. Just me. He sounded a bit off-put, like he knew something was wrong. I could tell he was on edge. I just wanted to know if you were alone or not, just to see if you had an extra set of eyes and ears out there. Oh, no, it's, it's just me out here. There was a brief pause, followed by another explosion of static. He eventually radioed back. Alright, I'm done. Something just slammed into my trailer. I... I heard a loud metallic crash explode from my speakers, followed by yelling. That ain't no hunter. It's rocking my damn truck. His voice sounded frightened. Static kept pulsating through the radio. Do you need me to call the police? I asked, worried about the safety of my new friend. No, I'm already dialed in and just got put on hold. I'm just going to hold off a bit on making noise and hope it goes away. If this some sort of bear, then it's a record holder. I left the radio alone for a little while, waiting for the old man to reply. I was scared for him. After a few surges of static and several minutes, I finally got a reply. The old trucker seemed hushed and talked under his breath. Hey, I hope you're still there. I don't want to be a burden to you, but I'm not feeling all that safe out here. Do you think you could pull up a map or something to get me out of here? I have to leave my trailer behind, but my job ain't worth my life. The faint sound of static hauntingly trailed off of his words. I felt bad for the man. Something out there was really setting him off. Hey, yeah, sure. If you can make it to my front door, I'll let you in. I'm just around the corner from the highway. You're a real lifesaver. Just give me a second and I'll get out my mobile radio and you can lead me there. I bit my cheek anxiously. I had no idea if what I was doing was right or even safe for that matter, but he needed my help and I didn't want to turn him away. Alright, I'm opening up my truck, he called in, his voice distorted heavily by static. The fog must have made the transmission come in broken, I reasoned to myself. Let me know when you hit a sign. I'll tell you where to go from there. A few seconds passed before he responded again. Willard Street, his voice crackled in. Take a right down that road and keep going until you hit an intersection. A few more seconds passed. Johnson and Avery, the voice remarked. I felt confused. He would have to be sprinting to have made it that quickly to the next sign. Are you alright? Do you need me to call someone? The radio echoed my voice back to me, muffled and contorted before I got a response from the man. No, I just want to get out of this fog. The trucker's voice repeated a few times before breaking apart into static. Alright, then take Avery all the way down, I replied. I felt the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Something about this wasn't right, and I wasn't dumb. My neighbor directly across my street was a police captain. I figured if I sent the old man there, he could get the help he needed, and I could pass it off as a mistake with my mental directions if asked. Tucker Court, the man reverberated in with the static. Let's see, walk three houses down, and my place should be on the left. I closed my eyes tightly, my forehead scrunched up in worry. I prayed this would work out for the best. I'm outside. I'm outside, the old trucker chortled, while different pitches of his voice all resonated nearly at the same time, repeating themselves. I put the mic to my mouth to tell him to knock, but couldn't muster up the courage. I set the radio down and turned it off. I looked over my shoulder to my attic's window. I took a deep breath and released it before deciding to take a gander. I wasn't expecting to see much. I mean, how could I? The fog covered everything. But I looked anyway. I got out of my chair and crept towards the window. I placed my hand on the wooden frame surrounding the glass and took a deep breath, conjuring up my courage. I slowly grabbed the curtains and very gently pushed them to the side, allowing just enough space for my eye to peek through. 
I know you want answers as to who or what was out there, but the fog was too strong. Nothing but whiteness exposed itself to me visually, but physically, emotionally, I felt it out there. I can only describe it as dread incarnate. It was a visceral, primal feeling that washed over me, stronger than anything else I've ever felt. I knew someone or something was out there, and it wasn't natural. It had a goal, an indecipherable, incomprehensible goal, and that goal led nowhere good. I could feel the sense of death creep into my bones, locking my joints in place. My body was stiffening for a quick end. As that feeling burned its way into my memories, I forced myself to have the courage to run away from that window. I turned my back towards the fog behind me and ran for my stairs. I ran on instinct. I felt my feet land on my lower floor and let myself be guided towards the only place in my home where I couldn't see into that mist, my windowless closet. I jumped inside and slammed the door behind me. I remember sitting in that closet for hours, staring off into the darkness, praying and hoping I imagined the feeling. I stayed up all night until I could see the sun filter in from under my closet door. I exited my safe haven and crawled to a window before I peered outside. I felt my mouth gape open when I saw my neighbor's attic window broken into. No marks on the walls of the home gave any sort of hint as to how whatever it was had climbed inside. I instinctively called the police, and they responded with haste. After all, my neighbor was one of them. They took me in and refused to tell me what they found inside. Even afterwards, the newspapers had nearly no information regarding the crime. The most I gathered was that my neighbor's family was murdered in their home while they slept. Him, his wife, and his two children, all gone. Those lives were extinguished because of me. Though that wasn't all that happened that night, there was another murder that also happened on the highway. An old trucker named Gale. Unlike the captain and his family, Gale's death was listed as an animal attack and was separate from the murder investigation. They claimed he parked too close to the woods and a bear must have wandered up to his door. They said they don't know what possessed him to open his door, but that had to have been when the bear got inside. He was mauled to death. That so-called bear ripped his head from his shoulders and took it off into the woods. They never found it, but we know differently. Or at least I do. That wasn't a freak accident. Some things out there, they're just waiting for directions.